Grade 7 math number 13.2a, theoretical probability of compound events using a table. Theoretical probability is based on theories of what might happen without doing any experiments. If a spinner has four equal color choices, there's theoretically one-fourth chance it'll land on our color choice. The p event, the probability of the event, equals the number of ways the event can occur over the total of equally likely outcomes. So if we want blue, we've got a one in four chance that it'll land on blue because there's four colors. Now a compound event, well that consists of two or more simple events. So we write the number of ways the compound event can happen compared to the total of equally likely possible outcomes. So they can be dependent or independent of each other. The events can be dependent on each other. So let's say we're choosing an orange candy from a bag of orange and grape candy. And there's an equal amount. Let's say there's five orange and five grape. And we take an orange candy out and we eat it. Now, the next time we pick a candy, there's one less orange. So the chance of getting grape goes up. Because there's still five grape in there, but now there's only four orange, see? So they're dependent on each other. The probability is dependent on what happened previously, see? Now, if we put the orange candy back in and then picked again and didn't eat it, then it would be independent, okay? But if we eat that candy and now there's one less, then it would be dependent on what happened before. So if it's independent of each other, that's choosing a flavor of ice cream like chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry, and choosing a cone or a cup. Choosing the flavor has nothing to do with it being in a cone or a cup. Those are completely independent of each other, see? Now, if you're lost or confused and you don't understand what I'm talking about, then that means you got a little bit ahead of yourself. You should go back to the grade 7 playlist and watch uh, the entire unit 12, 12.1, um, 2, 3, and 4, and there's even A, B in there, and A, B in there, and A, B in there, and A, B in there. So each of these has an A and a B video, so there's like eight videos here. And grade six math goes back to even more basic. So if you really want to begin at the beginning about probability, you might want to go back to the grade six math playlist for Joanne School and start with 8.1, okay? That'll help you a lot. Otherwise, let's keep going. So Emma rolls a set of dice. What's the probability that the sum of the numbers she rolls is a seven? So one die has one, two, three, four, five, six on it, and the second one has one, two, three, four, five, six on it. So for her to roll a seven, she would have to roll a six and a one, or a five and a two, or a four and a three, or a four and a three, or a five and a two, or a six and a one on that one, right? So, if you look at this, the probability of rolling a 2 would be a 1 and a 1. There's only one chance of rolling a 2. It's the same probability as rolling a 12. See? Because there's only 1, 6, and 1, 6 to make the 12. So they have the same probability, the same percentage of chance of getting a 2 or a 12. Look at the probability of a 4 and a 10. We could roll a 3 and a 1 to get a 4, or a 2 and 2, or a 1 and a 3. So there's three ways that we can get a 4. And there's three ways we can get a 10. So the probability of getting a 4 or a 10 is the same. See that? So we're going to use our table to find the sample space of rolling a particular set um, number with the dice, OK? So we're trying to roll a 7, OK? So we can see there's six different ways that she can roll a seven, but there's 36 possible rolls. With all the combinations and ways that the dice could land, there's 36 choices. There's six times six. Now, to find the outcome that could be seven, which there's six chances that it could be a seven, that means six out of 36 chances it could be a seven. See that? Or a one-six chance that she's going to roll a seven. All right? So that would be theoretical probability. We're not rolling the dice. We're just making a table to say, well, this is what could happen. See? It's the number of ways the event can occur over the likely outcome. See? It could happen six different ways out of 36 ways. And we're not doing the experiment, so it's theoretical. Now, I wanted to explain this to you. 
There's a thing called the fundamental counting principle. It's an easier way to determine outcomes when a table, list, or tree is just too large to use. What if you have too many options? So there's an event A and event B, and they're independent of each other, okay? If event A can occur in m amount of ways, in that many ways, and event B can occur in n ways, then they occur together in m times n. See, you would multiply them, all right? So let's take a look at what would happen with pizza, all right? So we've got a small, medium, or large pizza, and here's the toppings. We can have cheese, cheese and pepperoni, cheese and sausage together, cheese, pepperoni, and sausage together, or we could just have pepperoni and sausage together, or we could have plain pepperoni or plain sausage. So that means there's seven, seven different ways we could do these toppings. Now, there was three different sizes, but now we have seven different toppings. Or we could choose a crust, thin crust or deep dish. Now we have two different crust types. Well, that means that the event size, the event for A is the size, okay? Event B would be the topping, and event C would be the crust. And to find out how many different ways we could combine these, well, there's three different ty types of size, so that's three ways. There's seven different ways to combine the topping. So the probability of the topping is seven ways, and the crust is two ways, thin or deep. And then what we do is we multiply them like it says here, m times n. Except now we got three of them. So we're going to do 3 times 7 times 2. 3 times 7 is 21. 21 times 2 is 42. So there's 42 different ways that we could order pizza from these combinations. See? See how that worked? And that's called the fundamental counting principle, all right? So you just find how many ways the first one can be done, find out how many ways the second one can be done, and you could have five different choices. You could have size, topping, crust. Uh, you could have different types of cheese. So each would be an event, and then you just multiply them to each other to find the complete way they can be combined and in this case, the pizza can be combined into 42 different ways, all right? So that's using a table for theoretical probability of compound events, all right? Does that make sense? And we're going to make a tree next, a tree diagram. And we'll see how that works for this, okay? I hope this was helpful. I'll see you next video. Bye.